Hello, my name is Clive Scott and this is um, part 5 of the course on Java and um, it's all about arrays. Uh, this is what I'm going to cover. Um, I'm going to start off with uh, talking a little bit about assignment for classes because um, uh, you have to know a little bit about that so I'll cover that in a, in a bit of detail. That's it, uh, slide number 3 by the way. And, um, uh, and eventually go through all this stuff down here and discuss a little bit about the internal format of arrays. Not a great deal, just uh, just enough so you can understand what um, is happening if the uh, compiler gives an error message or something like that. And um, all in all, this should uh, hopefully come in under an hour. These are getting rather long, these courses, but uh, hopefully this will be a bit less. Uh, right, first of all, I want to get some uh, language sorted out. Um, now, uh, variables uh, have a type and objects have a class. And what that means is um, uh, objects are sitting somewhere in uh, memory in the heap usually and um, and uh, they have got a particular class and the variable that you're using to reference that object, to get at it, um, uh, has got a particular type and there's a sort of like distinction between those. Um, now the first question to ask is, uh, I'll sort out is, um, when can I assign a variable of type one to a variable of type uh, t two, for instance? Um, well, here's the first case. Uh, case number one. You've got a, a class t one and extends a class t two, either directly or indirectly. And by indirectly, I mean um, like uh, class A extends class B and class B extends class C and class C extends class D and so on. So A would indirectly extend D at the end, if you see what I mean. Okay, so here it is. Um, you create, uh, here's an example, you create two uh, two classes, um, two objects rather, of um, type T1 and type T2 and you put them in those variables. And uh, first of all, you can do that without any problem because um, type two is basic. Uh, T two is basically um, uh, it can hold um, um, a variable of type T one it, because it uh, it can refer to it because it it, it is uh, T one is of type um, T two and it's, it's actually of that type and and a bit more as well. But um, you can't do that. You can't um, uh, you can't take uh, T two and put it into T one. Uh, because that would give a compiler error. But um, you can do this here. And if you just uh, stuck T1 into T2 and you do that, you'll put it uh, back into, you copy it back again. Although it's already there, of course. Um, and that's quite okay. And what happens is, um, this is a cast here, it's uh, it's called um, downcasting this because you're taking a, a something which is um, a super type, that's uh, these things further up the tree as it were. It's called a super type and you're, you're casting that down to a subtype. And you can do that, but uh, and you have to do that. That's the only way to uh, assign a variable like that is to downcast it. And um, that's okay. And what happens of course is there's a runtime check. So uh, when the, when this bit of uh, code runs it's, um, it's checked and if it's not of uh, type T1 it will give an error. So you can do that, um, and that's quite legal. And if it uh, isn't of type T1, it will give you an error because it checks the type. Okay, so the second case, um, you got class T1 and implement it implements interface I1, either directly or indirectly. And uh, here we go, is um, our variable type T1 again, which we create there, and um, we put it into this uh, variable of interface type I1. Right, um, you'll notice I can't do new here because you can't new an interface because uh, an interface is just like a skeleton of uh, what's in the of what you want to implement. So um, you can't new it at all because there's nothing there. But you can store, uh, you can uh, use it as a, a reference to point to anything which implements it, so that's quite okay. And again, the same thing applies. Um, you can't do that again, because it will give a compiler error. And however you can do that, you can um, cast it. 
and uh, again the same thing applies it's um, it's quite okay um, in this particular instance because we know that it I1 is we just set it up there so we know it's of type T1 so you can do that uh, but if it isn't of course it will give a an error when you run it not when you compile it of course because what you're doing here is, is telling the compiler that you, when you do cast like that you're telling the compiler that um, you're quite sure that this is OK so um, that's what's happening there um, <coughs> of course the question is what does indirect mean when it comes to implementing interfaces well here's an example you've got an interface I1 and that extends another interface I2 and you've got a, a class C1 in that implements I1 and you've got a class C2 that extends C1 so C2 extends C1 C1 implements I1 I1 extends I2 so if you follow that tree you eventually deduce that um, C2 implements I2 and it does that indirectly of course now as a, another thing just to mention is that null this special null value is um, a valid value for any reference type at all class, interface or array and I'll come to talk about arrays in a second and um, uh, you can put that into anything and of course if you before you actually initialize uh, any of these variables they are uh, null if uh, if they're a member variable that is if they're on the stack of course then it's uh, random but then of course you can't use that variable if it's a local variable you can't use it um, until it's been uh, initialized if you try and read out of it before it's been initialized the compiler detects it and it's uh, stopping it it's quite clever in that respect <coughs> 